do you keep up with a lot of the producers out here? I try my best to, bro. I try my best mm-hmm. to. Um, I don't want to find myself in a box. You know what I mean? I want to work with anybody and everybody I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would you say it's a lot of competition out here between pr- producers? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, not just producers, man. Producers, artists, everybody, bro. Um, just just like like I said, man. Um, I don't want to put myself in a box. I'd like to. I'd love to work with everybody and everybody I can. But everybody don't have that same mentality. You know what I mean? And even if they say that that they do and they have that mentality, they want to work with everybody. They're they're uh, the the way the way they move and the way they operate speaks differently. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So looking back at the projects you put out, which one would you say is the most improved on? Every project's the most improved on. Every project's better than the last. The best one I would say. My newest one, Reconcile. It's on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere, your favorite streaming service, you can find it, Reckon Ralph, Reconcile. Um, that's my, my, realest, my realest album to date. I just, uh, keeping it real on there, being, being honest. I took two years off, so I'm letting people know what was going on during, the, during those two years. Um, it's different stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I say I took two years off, but I didn't really. It was kind of like a year. Cause I um, I kind of stopped. I dro- dropped an album in 2017. I had my daughter in 2018, and then uh, I dropped I dropped the album. You know, like I said, reconcile about two years later or so. Um, but right before that, I dropped a song with Juan Gotti called "Getting to Be Like" as well, and that was very well received. Um, even being that I hadn't dropped a song in a year, you know what I mean. So I I really pride myself on trying to be consistent. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Do you think the city respects the hip hop culture in? In San Antonio? Certain people do. Yeah. The hardcore scene, like the hardcore rock, like rock hardcore scene gets a little bit more respect, more love. Um, Hip hop scene's coming for it though. Hip hop's become pop culture, bro. You know what I mean? Hip hop's like, it's, it, it is pop culture now. It, it's, it, it is the main thing now. You know what I mean? It is popular culture. So it is, it's, it's going to be the main thing now. You know what I mean? Eventually. What's your views on like the radio stations and shit out here? Do you think uh, they show enough love to the artists out here, or do you think it's kind of like favoritism and shit like that? I like this question. You ask this question to a lot of artists. Um, it's biased, bro. It's biased. If you don't have a record deal, you're not gonna get a. You're not gonna get any play. That's just fact of the matter. You can call them and ask them and tell them. They tell you if you don't have a major record deal, you're not gonna get play, right? And then you get cats like Blake and people who do have a record deal, right? And they're still not getting play down here. And then you ask them why, and it's because they don't tailor to the demographic, because it's all Latinos down here, mm. right? So it's like, what do you have to do then? So do you feel like it's going to be harder for you to get yourself out there just because of the demographics out here? To be honest, bro, and like I kind of told you something off camera that's kind of like leads into this, but we'll cover it on our next interview or later or something, you know, but I'm not even focusing on San Antonio no more, bro. You know what I mean? I think that's that's the main the main uh, thing that people got to get into their heads. Everybody thinks they got to blow off or pop off in their city first. Your city's gonna show you love when everybody else starts showing you love, dog. They're gonna catch up late. Mm-hmm. So, who are your inspirations like looking up to in the music? Major or indie? Um, Anything? All time. All time inspiration. All time inspiration. I loosely, and I say I say loosely because it's, um, it's hard to model after them. But I loosely model my label after Top Dog. Top Dog Entertainment's my my inspiration. Um, like I said, hard to emulate them. Hard to be like that. You know what I mean? They they move like a machine. Um, smaller smaller scale. People like um, G T Garza. You know what I mean? If, you, if you're thinking like younger, you know what I mean? I, I, love, I love the way he operates, indie, owns his own shit, owns his own masters, does his own shit. That's, that's the way I want to be, you know what I mean? Um, since talking OGs, talking about San Antonio, Live Ola, King Kali, you know what I mean? People have been doing this with longevity, still making money off what they love to do. Mm-hmm. And you got work with some of them too, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. So talk about Wrecking Ralph. Like, how did you come up with that name? So was it before or after the movie? After after the movie. Okay. So it was. Uh, I didn't have a name, bro. I didn't have a name, and uh, I didn't want to like force it. I've always just been Ralph. You know what I mean? The movie was cool. Um, 
I just thought I'd play off of it. You know what I mean? I hear a lot of rappers play off of different stuff. You know what I mean? Like usually like old mobster names or um, sh old show names or different stuff. You know, I mean, everybody always plays off of something. You know what I mean? So I just figured Wreck and Ralph sounded kind of cool at the time, and uh, just been running with it ever since. You know. Mm -hmm. What's your overall goal and also like what do you plan on doing to make an impact on the culture? It well, doesn't even have to be out here, but yeah, my overall goal and And this is again like and I hate to talk on other people I feel like it's another place where people get it kind of messed up I don't want to be the star bro. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to be famous I don't want to be a star if, if I can make a living off of doing what I love whether it be audio engineering or rapping on the side or Doing some videos on the side or whatever the fuck it is like I'm cool, bro. If I can pay the bills doing that, I'm straight, dog. I ain't doing anything I ain't love to do. Uh, the real impact that I'm trying to leave behind, it's my guys, dog. Uh, you look I'll at... Get, introduce them real Yeah, quick. go ahead. What's up, bro? Look at that, man. Go ahead, talk your shit. Shit, this is SWA to the V. You already know who it be. 210 LDT all day. All right. So when y'all link up? Um... Uh, was that for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you just keep Oh, going. yeah, uh, so, um, shit, when did we link up, bro? Like, 2015, 16? Like I would say about 2015. 2015, 2016. Uh, we actually met through a, an, an old client of mine. Um, sometimes I get clients in here, bro. Um, a couple years ago, I was managing upwards of 10 client, uh, t 10 artists. So if, if you looked up LDT, if you looked up me, I had 10 artists under me, and I was recording all of them for free, um, for free, we have an agreement, you know what I mean, um, I had to take a step back, bro, you know what I said, like, I, I, I took two years off, had my daughter, two people stuck around, my boy Sav, my boy Swizzy, they're the stars, dog, straight up, um, I met them through an old client, sometimes when I'm recording these clients, bro, I wanted to get background how I got the 10 artists, you know, I had 10 artists. Sometimes when I'm recording these artists, bro, I see something, I hear things, you know what I mean? People have a, have a certain voice, um, a certain voice, a certain swag, a little drip to them, I don't know. Like, you can tell when somebody has something, you know what I mean? This dude's got something, bro. Um, a few people I had had something, you know what I mean? Having talent don't mean shit if you don't have the work ethic, though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can have all the fucking talent in the world, bro. If you ain't going to be up in here every day recording, it don't mean shit. If you ain't going to be up in here recording something different every day, it don't mean shit. If you ain't going to be in here after you're done recording, figuring out the next move, videos, promo, spending money, it don't mean shit, bro. You know what I mean? You got to spend a little bit of money for these interviews sometimes. You got to spend a little money for beats, videos, stuff like that. Shit don't come free. You know what I mean? And uh, just because you're part of a label or a team don't mean you get shit for free. You know what I mean? Everybody got to work. Everybody got to work for what they get. So the ones that fell off, like what happened now is just... <laughs> I hate to say it, bro, but he laughs too because I always tell him, I'm like... And, and I'm probably going to have people coming at me for this, but um, every time anybody stops fucking with me music-wise, they stop doing music. Or they slow down doing music. You know what I mean? And that ain't a shot, bro. It's just facts. You think it's because, like, you're an important source? Because, you know, you, you record. I am the source, bro. I'm the source. You can find another studio. You can find another spot. I work well with people, bro. I've been doing this for, like, like I said, since 2010. I've had a problem with three clients in 10 years. You know what I mean? And that's a whole other story in itself. You know what I mean? But um, I'm good business, bro. I'm good business. I'm good to work with. And I'm a one-stop shop. Like anything you need, I got it. And if I don't got it, I know somebody who can. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people can say that, bro. But a lot of people can't pull it together. And I've been doing it consistently. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So going back to LDT, um, you said there's two people left. Are you looking to add, are you searching for any more talent? Uh, can anybody fuck with y'all or... You know, it's just, you just focused on your two artists right now. I love that you asked that, man. I get that question a lot. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, because we're, we're not a big label. I'm, I don't get a lot of attention, but you wouldn't believe how often I get that question. Like, hey, are you adding people to the team? Can I join your team? You know, this, this, or that. I'm not doing that no more, bro. Um, like I said, a couple years ago, I had 10 artists under me, 10 different people. 
it's a lot, bro, for one person, you know what I mean? One person record and put all their shit together. They want me to do all their CDs the same way I do mine, a lot of shit, you know? Um, I'm kind of happy I only got two people left over, bro, because they're real as fuck. They kept me when I, when I, I, I signed everybody to a contract, bro, that we could, we, everybody was on an agreement. We could all terminate this contract on any terms. I could terminate it. If I have to, they could terminate it. If they have to, nobody's locked into anything. It's just an agreement in case we run into any money. We know how to split the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I signed everybody to an agreement. Everybody got pissed because I had a baby. And, and not, not because I had a baby, but they got pissed because I couldn't work, right? And I couldn't work because I had a baby. I was focusing on family. I started working at Wells Fargo. I started working at Armored Trucks. I was getting good jobs, bro. You know, I'm not taking care of my family, doing what I have to do. So they were getting upset that I couldn't uphold my end of the contract, which is understandable, right? Completely understandable. You think about business wise, right? I can't be mad at them, bro. But I can say that these dudes are fucking real as shit because I didn't uphold my end of the contract. I couldn't. Right? Still stuck around. It's still here. So, I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, I can't be mad at them. I didn't uphold my end of the contract. You know what I mean? That was part of it. We could terminate on any terms. You know what I mean? But it speaks volumes on these guys. Mm -hmm. And was there anybody that taught you, like, the business side or you just picked it up as you went on? Self-taught, bro. Mm -hmm. It's hard, bro. Lose a lot of money. (laughs) What What kind of advice would you give to somebody watching right now that wants to... You know, be a manager or some shit. Research. Research. Do it your damn self. Read. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fucking read. Um, just backtracking a little bit. Like you said, um, back, we'll come back to this. I don't mean to go back on you. Um, you are saying if anybody can join the team, this can be my head of A&R. I'm not doing that no more, bro. I told him in a year or two, whenever he feels we're ready, we're profitable, we're doing good. He finds an artist, brings them to me, a couple artists, two or three of his choice. I'll decide on the last one. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll make the final decision. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, I don't, I don't want to do that no more, bro. <laughs> it's too much responsibility. You know what I mean? Especially you pushing your own shit. Right, and then uh, like I was telling him too, though, it, it, I don't want to just add anybody, bro. Like to me, it, it shouldn't just be anybody. Cause I'm like, we're all building ourselves up from the ground up. I don't want to build nobody else from the ground up. I feel like if he's going to bring me something, bring me something, we just got to add some gas to the fire. You know what I mean? Yeah, so he pretty much got to bring something to the table type shit. Exactly. We ain't feeding nobody over here, bro. You know what I mean? He got he, he got a chain, bro. I gave him that chain. I put him on. Usually you only get a chain with a big label. It's a plain chain chain. It ain't, it ain't a fucking iced out or nothing, but he works, bro. He works. And every time he's out there, it's LDT this, sad that, LDT that. You get a chain. So when exactly did LDT come into play? Like when you first started or? 2013. 2013. That's that's when um, I did, when I had my sound, you know. I, I started recording in 2010. Um, established my sound in 2013, 2014-ish. And whenever I established my sound, I want to say 2013, is when I established LDT. And I've been building it ever since then. Uh, I got, got my, my logo tattooed. Got it here. Bro, I got it on my hats. I got merch. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I'm... My bad. I don't mean to fuck up the microphone, bro. I'm yeah. probably hearing this shit. Um, I'm, I'm steady branding. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like that's a really important part a lot of people miss. Um, you could, Like I said, you can have all the talent in the world. But if you're missing the business side... You ain't gonna go nowhere. Mm-hmm. And the business side is all of it. Like you were saying, the business side that, I, that I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Stuff management wise, business side, merchandise, um, appearance, image, you know what I mean? All, all that's business, bro. You have to think about every aspect of the game.